Welcome, guys, to the Guy Coco Coco Gym podcast. I'm your host, Pop, and we got your boy, Willie Man, over here. Um, Graham is. And Graham is, uh, CPT for lack of a better term, usual. being Graham. <laughs> <laughs> so, I walked my dog, uh, brushed my teeth, washed my face, changed my outfit, like, got ready to go for the day. And this man, I don't know, he built different. Yeah, he definitely built different. But, uh, Today, we're going to talk about a little bit of a kind of a somber uh, topic. Um, and basically, we're going to be talking about uh, men's health and how we as men, especially as we get older, and even if you're young too, we should like, you know, keep up with our uh, physical health, mental health, just our health in general. Um, we just talked about mental health, but uh, we're going to deep deep go dive more into um you know physical health so uh a really one of my favorite youtubers like i i I watch his content religiously and he's helped me develop as a as a better man um mtr or mediocre tutorials and reviews um just today revealed that uh he had cancer right he just got diagnosed with cancer and i mean this is a dude that's like fit he he uh, takes care of himself and everything you would never think that it could happen to him and he himself never thought it could happen to him but it did um basically um i'm gonna leave the the link to his uh story in the description box below but long story short um he was you know i think back earlier this year he was you know taking care of himself showering himself and he felt like a little bit of a weird lump on his uh on his testicle uh he didn't really think any of it because it was kind of like faint i guess then later on this week he felt this uh lump again so it's like huh this is kind of weird and this guy like you know this youtuber is famous youtuber for up and coming youtuber i mean he's not up and coming he's pretty much up there now but uh he's big on health so he's like yo i need to go and get a checkup so like he gets his checkup his physical he does his like he does like a blood screen uh std screen all this stuff everything is clear and then he mentions to his doctor like hey you know i felt this lump down here can you check it out the doctor checks him out and the doctor is kind of like uh we're not sure it could be nothing um but then he's like yo if it was something what's the next step and then he's like, uh, doctor is like, um, you know, you could go get an ultrasound. So he's like, let's do that. Let's do it. You know, what could it hurt? He has, you know, I'm guessing he has the YouTube money. He's, yeah. he's kind of well off. I so mean, he does it. Insurance, so. Yeah, true. That He probably has insurance too. And But long story short, he gets the ultrasound. Everything is up. Everything on his physical is clear, except for that one part. That lump was actually... Um, malignant and it was a 99 percent of percent chance of cancer um he had a little difficulty setting up an appointment but then i think he got referred to an oncologist and then the oncologist pretty much when he saw his results was like yo you need to come in and uh yeah he confirmed it's cancer it's malignant and they're gonna have to pretty much remove his testicle and this is a dude that's like i think he's in his mid 30s he's like 35 so he's a little bit older than us yeah. this dude is fit i mean he practices what he preaches he drinks water all the time he's healthy but all of a sudden out of the blue almost he has you know cancer that's malignant you know malignant for those of you who don't know it could spread it's spreadable why am i saying all this stuff can happen randomly right stuff like this can happen randomly you can be i've seen people who smoke like chimneys and they you know they pass they flying colors <laughs> on their pt tests and i've seen people i.e mtr healthy dude fit dude but he has cancer i know that i myself included are not big fans of the doctor it's kind of one of those things i guess men are kind of like you know i can i can deal with it we're taught by society kind of programmed to kind of deal with it um, a lot of us, I know myself, I don't know about Will, before I joined the military, I had no insurance. So I was, it was kind of like, yo, you're going to drink some water and <laughs> yeah, I mean, and take some uh, robotussin and be on your way. But it's, it's really important 
to just at least have uh you know a checkup one once a year even t- if you can't afford it like once every two years because you never know you never know like this dude is gonna have a life-changing surgery luckily he caught it before yeah. it you know it spread but it's just it's just a reminder to us men that uh we need to get on our health and on another note on a personal story it's like um i was watching another uh i guess manosphere slash red pill content creators uh the fresh and the fit and uh I've always never really was like super heavy into PT during uh, during my time in the military. Like I hated running. I hated it with a passion, coupled with the fact that I was working 12s like all the time. Like by the time I'm done with work, and when I mean 12s, that's like 12s actually working, plus you got to yeah, do yeah, cans constantly. and forms. Yeah. So that's like 14 hour days. Like Bro, I'm not, not going to have drive home. Make exactly. Food. Drive home. Bro, I was driving home from mids like half asleep. How many times I nearly crashed? Like I'm dead ass serious. Like nah, it was rough. I'm not gonna say his name, but uh, <laughs> we had a dude at Little Rock, no cap. We had been working twelves for like three weeks, bro. And this yeah. man was so tired, he literally drove his car into a church. Like, bro, tragic. I believe bro. It. But I mean, he I was he was okay and everything like that. Oh my god! But, oh, here we go. Bruh. I just started started loud. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Grant makes his appearance and while Grant has appeared. Like, Don't call it a comeback. Yo. I've been here for years. No, okay. All right. oh God, no. <laughs> but just to but just to finish my story. Yeah, yeah. So I'm 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 watching these guys is uh, fresh and fit. And uh one of the guys, Mono, is pretty much saying that like yo if you're fat and sloppy, like he's not gonna have respect for you. We'll backtrack. Yeah. Right. You wanna backtrack? All right. What did I even do? No, no, no. All right, so let's, <laughs> let's take a break real quick, just to backtrack around. Uh, we we're talking about men's health and uh go ahead, Pop. I, I can't remember. I know who you're talking about, but I don't know this uh, uh, there's a video I was talking about uh MTR, medio- mediocre tutorials and reviews, uh really great guy putting people put young men and even older men on game uh he found out he had cancer testicular cancer oh that video you posted yesterday yeah yeah that was kind of so we're just talking about pretty much like how men we need to get on top of our getting our shit checked out even if it costs money uh try to keep healthy like try to exercise as much as you can which let me just finish up yeah go ahead yeah but let me just finish up before our time is up so it goes into like um so i'm another fan of uh this other podcast uh in the red pill slash manosphere um area the fresh and fit and uh marlon one of the the podcast hosts was saying that hey if he sees a guy and he's fat and sloppy and whatever he's not gonna respect him and it kind of put a lot of things in perspective when he said that because when i see when i see when i saw some of the guys in like the military and they were like super ripped or whatever like you automatically have like some kind of respect for them because it takes a lot of discipline and whatever and time and effort to to be that way and it's kind of like it goes both ways among your peers as males and among women as well it's like who's gonna be more for lack of a better term attractive or not necessarily attractive, but who's going to be more approachable? A dude that's fit. Obviously, it shows signs that he's disciplined, that he's taking care of himself. And that translates into other areas of his life. For a dude that's like sloppy and fat. That's okay. going to translate into other areas of his life. So wow. that kind of encouraged me to like go in the gym. Like now I go to the gym like six times, seven times a week. Mm-hmm. And try to be the best that I can be. So long story short guys just it, you don't have to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger fit or whatever but get your fitness Wait, you on say? try to Arnold Schwarzenegger uh. <laughs> this guy you trying to you trying to you trying to catch me up yeah you want that revenge? No, I don't know. I already man. know this gonna be a meme. I already know this gonna be a meme. No, you know he want that revenge. Sweat. You know, no, that's no sweat. Be kid who like. 
<laughs> but but, not to be but like guys, that, just you know, get get your get your health mm-hmm. checked out. Get yourself checked out if you can. You know, eat healthy, meaning cut out the junk food. Not saying that you can't have any junk food at all. You can have cheat days, but try cheat to minimize on the crappy food. Drink Don't lots of water, all that good stuff. Go ham on everything. Yo, yeah, I'm, no, no. So, all right, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to cut you off. Um, yeah, go ahead. But it's like what you just said. Don't get me wrong. Like I see the logic and the reasoning behind it. Mm-hmm. Personally, nah. Like it's I'm not. So like, when I see somebody who's fit at the gym, where mm-hmm. you see, you know, well disciplined, and, and that's a beautiful outlook. Don't get me wrong. My thing is like. There's probably a lot of self hate there, a lot of narcissism. You know what I mean? Like, there's, it's like, yeah, like, like, so you think about it. If you're never happy with your body image, yes. you go to the gym to work out all the time. Like, you cut yourself down, you, you starve yourself. Eating disorders, all of these things come from that social norm aspect. Where, in my opinion, I'm not saying be big or whatever. Honestly, I don't have a problem with being big. <laughs> I think like everybody should like like you should just live your life do what you want to do like nobody should tell you or you shouldn't feel pressured you shouldn't feel pressured by like social norms to change how you look how you feel you know what i mean like like and don't get me wrong people who go to the gym like we know it makes you feel good ultimately you know like that runner's high that when you exhaust yourself like that that like you're mentally and physically exhausted you don't even care no more about anything else that's going on like you're just good for the day but getting somebody to get up and actually go to the gym is a whole nother thing and it's one of those things where i'm not gonna i don't think you should make people feel some kind of way like for not doing that because i don't even think you gotta go to the gym honestly like you just walk around your block yeah people don't understand like the, the benefits of walking is fucking astounding like you will melt a lot of weight just by starting your metabolism go eat and then take a 30 minute walk at the lengthiest aspect of it like take this walk and your metabolism will start to pick up to start burning energy and then it won't stop it's like so many little things that you can do to kind of stay fit and stay healthy in a sense but i'm not about to be on a sports nigga like i'm not about to have wait what'd you say don't play with me <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm not about, yeah. did you just build an argument about not going to the gym? Yeah, I definitely see how you be vibing for sure. Wow, I see how you be vibing. don't do that. In the middle of- <laughs> wow, all right, so I'm gonna say something for these two go at it, but uh, I mean, the gym doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to be the gym. I mean, yeah, it don't have to be, uh, the gym. yeah, the walk, to be the gym. so personally, I started walking. Uh, started a challenge where I just go up 2000 steps every week. Um, but that goes into overworking out. Uh, I was doing a step challenge. Essentially, I started at 6000 steps and I got up to 14,000 steps. So like every week I went up 2000 steps. But when mm-hmm. I got up to 14,000 steps, like my knees started hurting, like my uh, I was not necessarily fatigued, but like the routine got boring. So I took a week break week two now nah it's slow like a week and a half but not to but, misconstrue uh, <laughs> what i'm saying i'm saying guys oh my here we don't go. overdo it but it's a good idea to be active Yo, can it doesn't I necessarily have to be the can gym I, you don't necessarily have to be can i can i, can I get my point above like, but i'm just like, saying everybody all right I'll just go ahead, go ahead. Like, oh okay back all right so back to what i was saying uh because i'm taking both of your guys' perspectives and i'm kind of molding them I'm, I'm gonna be the neutral but uh wow I mean, y'all. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I don't got, I don't got my cover destroyed without you. <laughs> no, but working out for sure. Like uh, looking at your health from Pop's point of view. Yes, you need to do this. Not saying that you need to be the buffest or the fittest person in the gym. Um, what Graham said. Yes, there are a lot of people who work out because of like uh, self-image. Yeah. Yeah, issues sure. things like that um i know uh, people who are anorexic or people who just can't gain weight because some i mean it goes both ways like you have people who are small who want to be bigger and they're just like yo i can't put on 25 pounds and then you have the other spectrum where dudes are in the gym and they're like yo i can't lose 25 pounds uh yeah. whatever drives you or motivates you to get to the gym that's based on you but also be safe 
be healthy about it. Don't do any extreme things. Like they've gone over the research about diets and things like that. Um, like the great these, challenge. Yeah, like some of these diets are like a little ridiculous. So yeah, to that extent, I think like it can be either or. Both of you guys are right. Neither one of you guys are wrong. Um, but also mm. it's it's about uh, research and information. And balance. Yeah. There, well, you yeah. Have to find so balance. so before I joined the military. I don't know. I don't even know if y'all know this about me. Like I was majoring in biology. Like I love the study of life. You know what I mean? Like, like that's like super important to me. Like that science, that aspect of it. And what it boils down to really, in my opinion, we need to destroy social norms. Social norms should yeah. not exist. Exactly. You should know your body type and then you should work out to that. Cause there's some people like, I know people who don't work out a day in their life. And there are twigs like like they yeah. can as you were saying like cannot gain weight their thyroid is hyperactive yeah. and it's gonna keep pumping no matter what they do like this is their, their metabolism is on go mode mm -hmm. all the time it's like and there are people who don't have that and then there's like the middle ground in between that like those are the two extremes like the ones who can't lose weight and the ones who can't keep weight and then it's like you have everybody else in the middle who you kind of range in in between like so i'm like a prime example like before i even joined the military like i was 160 so i used to be fat like i still got the stretch mark that like, stretch marks to prove it like like all like all down my body like stretch marks like awesome. Let's keep this PG thirteen, my dog. Let's keep it PG thirteen. But now, nah. well, I like the, you know, yeah, yeah, like my arms, hips, knees, like the the normal kind of like stretch marks areas. Like I still got them, and personally, I'm not ashamed of them. Yeah, yeah, like I I wear mine proudly. Like it's just like one of those things where like it's a, a remembrance, and it's not even like from a bad time. It was just a time that I was bigger. It yeah. was like when I was like two. I think I hit the max hit was like two sixty. And I don't know, one day I literally just woke up and I was like, I'm about to lose all this weight. And the and thing is, just, knowing how he looks, like, because we've all worked together and stuff like that, like, yeah. I would never see him at 260 because I'm at, like, 225 right now. So to think yeah. about 40 more pounds, like, good. Because you're about as tall as me. I think you might be taller than me. What are you, six uh, foot? Six two, six two. Yeah, yeah, you're taller than me, so. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, we used to kind of like, I don't know, you're not like yeah, that much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm six foot, so. Okay, Pop no, is yeah. like five six. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yo, for real, Yo, stop real. playing. Real. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yo. I'm five eleven. Anyway, but... yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. <laughs> no. That's one away from six. That's that is fine. You, I don't remember seeing you and like, oh man, you short. Like, like you but are. I do have a lot of that uh, range buddies who work out. And uh, truthfully, so we can do an episode on like uh, men's health and the differences between like what's healthy as far as working out and things like that. Because like you guys have said, like, yeah, I started taking, so the military, you develop bad habits. So at least on the flight line for oh, eating for habits sure. and stuff oh, like that. I remember 100%. I got into my new job. I literally showed up to work like the second day I had the BX or the shop at special. I had the monster, the torpedo, uh, the like i had some donuts cigarettes. yeah Shoot. like cigarettes yeah. like uh dip shit like that and i showed up and a dude was like yo why are you eating like this i was like what you mean like to me yeah. i had been eating like this for so long that it didn't even matter i was just like what you mean like and he was like yo like is that your breakfast i was like yeah like breakfast of champions like what you mean like i got everything i need i got sugar i got a little bit of meat in the Pause. But uh, I got a, <laughs> I got a torpedo. Uh, I got my like my dip like for stress management things like that. Like, but uh, what what was it? Like yeah, COVID. So COVID happened, right? And that really got me thinking about like the things that I was doing. Like I I took COVID as like a way to self improve um, because I was my eating habits were horrible. Not even, and then even COVID. Like since everything was shut down and we only could eat fast food and like everybody was oh, buying that was everything. the worst yeah. yeah bro it was like it was bad it was like yo you can't even go to the grocery store half the time and everybody was scared to go to the grocery store 
Yo, but, I was talking about that actually real quick yeah. like when that COVID thing because like that shit fuck with a lot of people. Oh yeah, like, mentally too. Like that yeah, was, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, like I had my daughter, and that was important for me. Like I loved like like we were having a blast. Like it was like yeah. we just you know what I'm saying vibing, chilling. Not that way. All right, calm down. I just thought about it. <laughs> that's about work. Right. But like we were, yeah, yeah, we were like chilling and like. Sure. COVID happened and then I couldn't I couldn't keep her <laughs> so I had to like give her away not give her away I'm sorry that sounds bad I had to give it, send it back to my mother because I didn't have like that network yeah. at the time like I, I wasn't in the child care community I was like thugging oh yeah they, just, they, they definitely know. shut down child care for a little while too yeah bro like it was like and it was homeschooling all that stuff yeah us being essential personnel yeah. you know what I mean yeah. like no less at a risk of not being exposed to COVID because definitely about half my shop caught it. It was like one of those things where I had no other option. And it's like that it, that actually kind of like low-key fuck with me. And then I like I, like I talked to my old friends from a time and they'll be like, hey, stop! <laughs> and they'll be like, yo, it's what happened to you friends. doing it? Yo, <laughs> it's, it's vibing, it's vibing, friends. Yo, I'm telling. All right, we, we, we go get that. That's gonna be a whole other episode. We'll do that one. Night. That'll be y'all gonna hear the stories. All right, but anyway, it's gonna be after hey, hours. After uh, hours, oh, when we open up our yeah. Patreon. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh no, hell yeah! Like, so I already me and Will, we didn't record it though. But, like, we was on yesterday after we playing StarCraft. Like, we. <laughs> had a whole conversation we didn't record wait what huh. that's Every crazy huh? bro stop playing with me <laughs> yo the shit i was telling you you cannot like like <laughs> uh, i gotta keep it in the confidential folder just in case i get black note any day 100 like, percent. that's fair that's fair. <laughs> that is fair. i'll give you that one <laughs> I know, like, it's definitely quite a quite a bit of stories, but um, not all in that realm. No. But I like I go back to them and they ask me like two questions, like where's your daughter and then where's your puppy, and I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. Like, like yeah. it's really because like that shit like mentally kind of like stuck with me. And, and it's one of those things even, where that even goes back into the mental health issues because like mm -hmm. uh, COVID. I had a bunch of conversations with people who were just like, I was like, all right, why don't everybody just stay in the house? Like, I get it, blah, blah, this and that. Not thinking about people who have actual mental health issues or dealing with mm -hmm. uh, separation or dependencies. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So then I had to take a step back and be like, OK, there was a lot of people who weren't stable to begin with and were like, once COVID happened and they had all this isolation, like it just blew that whole problem out of proportion and truthfully for me i had so much stuff going on that when COVID happened i was just like yo i'm glad we ain't gotta do nothing like i'm trying to be in the house like yo like, i think chilling. so many so like, many maintainers felt that like oh, so yeah, many people who worked the flight line was like yo you telling me yes i stay home yes and you like We're say no more let home. me go yeah, exactly yep, let me catch up on this. everything that I haven't done in the last 17 years. Exactly, <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah, for sure. Exactly. exactly. So, that, I mean, but there was two sides of the story. Like, there was people who were, like, super hyperactive, proactive, or uh, mm. productive. Productive? Yeah. Productive. But those are the mm -hmm. same motherfuckers who would go out, like, they be the ones you see when you're driving in, like, when they was like, oh, yeah, y'all can walk and stuff like that, as long as you by yourself or you yeah. practice in social distancing. You know what I mean? And it's like, those but are the you same ones you would them. see. Yeah, you can't knock No, them no, them, I'm not. No, 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 no. That's, that's, not, that's not hate. I, I said motherfuckers like, like that's not hate like I by all means like some people need that sun ray boost yeah like you need to get out there experience the sun and and that's I did that every day like I'd go walking just in the afternoon so it'd be like mm -hmm. alright cool like I mean yeah, yeah social dis but that's the thing is like uh, we've become a very social community or a social society mm -hmm. where like I mean think about how big social media has blown up in the last 10 years like people were like really dependent on friends family like people all types are, of stuff like, yeah and, like, uh, still yeah but covid i mean me personally um my family's already known about me being like 
kind of anti-social, not necessarily, but that goes back to like when my grandfather died. Like my grandfather mm -hmm. essentially kept the family together. And yeah. then when my grandfather passed away, the family just kind of just like stopped coming to the house. Like we stopped having gatherings because everybody mm -hmm. just didn't deal with the loss of my grandfather. Yeah, and I that went that. back into like my morals and values where I was like, okay, I want to be that person for my family, but I didn't know how to do it. So then I just went out into the world. I joined the military, traveled the world, did all these things. And I haven't got my orders yet, but I'll keep my fingers crossed, but I'm probably going back to the States at this point. So oh, yeah. maybe, that's go just Chicago. A, yeah, maybe that's just a sign, a sign that I need to go back and actually reconnect with my family. I mean, my family's yeah. going through stuff right now, especially after COVID and everything like that. Yeah, um, but so, it's like, that's like, you got to build that clout you know what i mean like like to be that person in your family like that pinnacle because my grandmother was the same way like in my eyes a saint and but she made sure like everybody unified around our house yeah. like well their house like i guess kind of my house too but anyway they all unified around there and mm -hmm. like once she passed away like it just kind of stopped happening and like i was saying yesterday when i was like you know oh, here, i guess here it is like the shout out to like my William side of the family because they are still like this like like they are super tight knit like I every and every time I go home I'm telling you like it's always nothing but love like yeah. they're always around they're always like they've driven to come visit me you know what I mean because like we had that issue in the military yeah, when we yeah. go home and then we like yo mm -hmm. I'm finally here. here come see me 5,000 miles from where I fucking was yeah. you know what I mean and then it's like people are like oh man I'm busy today I gotta do this I gotta do that and you're like oh all right yeah say no more so when you don't see me for the next four years <laughs> now you know why you know what I mean like because <laughs> exactly. you gotta work I gotta work so there we go I'm gonna take my leave and I'm gonna go visit this different place totally tropical island whatever wherever I can go before I'm gonna come home. And it doesn't mean like I hate my family or anything like that. Like I love my family. My family's actually really good about that. And like I said, especially that side of them. I I love that about them. Like they always, everywhere, no matter where I was, like, yo, we heard you in town, where you at? And I'm like, yeah. bet I'm here or I'm there. And they're like, no matter, I've been different places and they still always show up. And I'm like, that's love. And I'm like, we need that especially as military because by us being gone so long we don't really talk to everybody every day you know what i mean we don't really get to see everybody every day and it's like when you see people who try like that i think not even just military people in general when you see people who try mm -hmm. and they care about you like that, that just means so much more it yeah, means yeah for sure a lot. yeah like that separation because even if you don't have like separation issues when you're alone you're alone you know what i mean like like that's just flat out we generally pick the people that we work with being in the military because we're so mobile we pick those people to be our family in the military now uh wonders why you know suicides on the up uprising you know people aren't happy the morale is low they keep pcs and all my boys to different bases bro. yeah <laughs> in so many words yeah. like that's yeah. really what it is like a lot I mean, of people like if the you people think of, who you choose yeah. in that moment and lead, then think about yeah. it like towards the end of your like tour or whatever like that everybody starts leaving like in order so you're like the last dude there from your friends group you're just kind of like bro mm. y'all really uh, love like yeah because like i talked to my boys right now like we we had our like three amigos and we're already like pretty much in that phase like one of us already left i'm about to leave soon and then it's just kind of like all right here we go start over again at the next base find some yep. find some new people to hang out with like but that yes. even takes time to like figure out who you can trust like yeah i'm gonna say yeah to trust everything like, like what you want to do like but i mean that's a part of life so that's going to be always a problem i mean you swap a new job you got to meet people and then you eventually find that work buddy who's just like how often are people really switching jobs as much as we switch bases there are people out there but i mean i get what you're saying i mean a lot of people i mean some people work in the same job for 10 years and same people been working there for 10 years so Yep. I mean, but Fine. that goes into having friends outside of work. <laughs> that goes back to that TikTok where it's like my friends be like, yo, add me on Facebook. It's like, bro, I can't do that. It's like, 
I'm damn near a gang member outside of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, that'd yeah. be the difference between your work friends and your like actual friends. Like, bro, like, yeah. sometimes you just want to do hood rat shit with your friends. Like, that's just a thing. Like.